Welcome back to Synthetic Biology One. Today we're going to be measuring fluorescence in bacterial cultures and to help us learn how to do that I have prepared a little game. Here before me you see two plates of bacteria marked S27 and S28. One of these bacteria I have transformed with a construct that gives red fluorescence, RFB, and the other one I have not. So, by measuring fluorescence today, we are going to determine which of these two bacterial cultures is fluorescent. Uh, and we're also going to try to be as quantitative as possible about measuring that fluorescence. So at the end of the day, we want to know how much more fluorescent is uh, uh, the fluorescent culture. First step, take these single colonies from these plates and grow up an overnight culture in LB. This is something that we've seen before, so I uh, grab an inoculating loop like this one, pick a single culture, single colony off the plate, start a culture. These are 25 mil cultures. Put them in the incubator 37 degrees overnight, and the next day they look like this, right? These are saturated cultures. We can tell because uh, they're, they're very cloudy. They look like saturated cultures. So these are good. They've been growing overnight. Now they're ready to use. Next step, take a one mil aliquot of each of these cultures. Our fluorescent measurement technology is very sensitive. It does not require a large volume of cells. One mil is gonna be more than enough. Take my one mil of cells, transfer it to a 1.5 mil Eppendorf tube like this one, and don't forget to label. One mil of cells. The next thing we need to do with these cells is wash them. So we grew our cultures in LB because that's a standard media formulation. But unfortunately for us, LB looks like this, right? It's this yellow, golden color uh, in the lab. It's also fluorescent, right? So LB contains vitamins and, and other small molecules that are, that are fluorescent, which means that if we do our fluorescence measurements in LB, we'll have a high background coming just from the LB itself. So that means we need to remove the LB. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to wash the LB out and replace it with PBS, phosphate buffered saline, uh, which is just a, a neutral solution that looks like this. Uh, it's perfectly clear and has no fluorescence background. So. We take our one mil of cells into the centrifuge, spin them down, 30 seconds, maximum speed. Pop them out. Pour off the spent LB. And then what I'm gonna do is invert these tubes on a sterile Kim wipe and kind of blot them. This will absorb just those last few drops of LB. It's also cleaner, like I don't have LB on my hands when I'm done. I like it. Dry them out a little bit. And you can see the pellet uh, stays very firmly stuck to the bottom of the tube. Now we resuspend equal volume of PBS. You'll notice that I pipe that up and down to break up the pellet. And then vortex, just to make sure all the, the cells are completely homogeneous in the PBS.
<clears throat> Next step. In order to get accurate fluorescence measurements, I need to dilute these cultures, right? So remember that we started with an overnight saturated culture of E. coli and LB. So that means we expect the OD to be three or five or even higher, right? So this is a, this is a very dense culture. It's almost opaque. There's just no way for light to penetrate a culture like that, which means that we can't get accurate OD readings and we can't get accurate fluorescence readings. So I'm going to take these cultures and I'm going to dilute them by a factor of 10. Also in PBS. This is going to bring them down into the, the linear range of our OD measurements and our fluorescence measurements. Right, so you figure saturated culture has an OD of about 3. If I do dilute it by 1 to 10, it'll have an OD of about 0 0.3. And what we want is something in the range of 0 0.1 up to 0 0.9. This is the linear range of, uh, of OD for most uh, absorbance and fluorescence measurements. Give them another vortex. Okay. And now, looking at a culture like that, uh, I can just sort of tell by eye that this is where we want to be for an absorbance measurement or a, or a fluorescence measurement. Uh, it's cloudy, but I can still see through it, uh, which means it's, it's going to be roughly in the linear range of our OD uh, measurements. But just to be safe, I'm going to take a quick measurement of the OD here on my, uh, my benchtop spectrophotometer. A few hundred microliters of these cells load them into a cuvette, and uh, I've already prepared the spectrophotometer. I've, I've, I've blanked it with a, a blank of just pure PBS. So I've got an OD of 0 0.37 for the first culture. and 0 0.38 for the second culture, and that, that makes sense. That's about where I expected them to be. Normally, of course, I would write them down, but uh, you guys will remember, right? Sure. <clears throat> now, you'll notice that both of these ODs that we're starting with are not necessarily exactly the same, right? And uh, this is important because you naturally you would expect more cells to produce more fluorescence, right? And when we're taking a fluorescence measurement, generally what we're interested in is not the total amount of fluorescence, but the fluorescence per cell, right? So that's why uh, when we do these fluorescence measurements, we're going to measure simultaneously the OD, which we know is proportional to the number of cells, so that we can normalize by the number of cells, right? So the, the interesting unit in this case is not the total fluorescence, but it's the fluorescence divided by the OD or the fluorescence per cell, if you like. Now to take our fluorescence measurements, we are going to use a 96 well plate that looks like this. So this is a 96 well plate. If you haven't seen it before, it's basically just 96 tiny little test tubes that we use whenever we want to do 96 experiments at once instead of just one experiment at once. Okay? And in this case, I've chosen uh, a model that has a clear bottom. This is very important because it's going to allow light to pass through so that we can take absorbance measurements. And it's got black walls, which means that those black walls will soak up any extra light that we, uh, that we uh, use to take our fluorescence measurements, and it will, uh, it will help prevent that, that, uh, that, that stray light from coming back into our detector and showing up as background. So just <clears throat> as an example, um, here's a clear plate. Right? This is something that you don't want to use for fluorescence measurements because you can have shell cells shining uh, across the gap and sort of contaminating their neighbors with their fluorescence. And uh, a white plate is also not a great choice because it's going to reflect a lot more of the light, uh, potentially giving a higher background signal. So we use our black plates. These have a working volume of about 200 microliters. So I'll load in 
200 microliters of S27. Two hundred microliters of S twenty eight, and of course, two hundred microliters of pure PBS with no cells in it, and this will be my blank. All right, let's go measure some fluorescence. Here we are in the dark room. I've set up our illuminator tool. We've got two green excitation filters tuned to the wavelength of RFP excitation and one red emission filter tuned to the wavelength of RFP emission. What this is going to allow us to do is to stimulate specifically the red fluorescent protein and then observe specifically the fluorescence light that is emitted by RFP fluorescence. With this setup, just by eye, we'll be able to solve the mystery of which of our two strains is transformed with the red fluorescent protein. So, let's start by taking a look at the plates that we began with. So here I'm loading on the petri dish struck out with single colonies of S27. Mm, doesn't look like there's anything there. And now when I add the S28 plate you can see very clearly very bright red fluorescent colonies. So this is S28. This definitely resolves the mystery of which strain is fluorescent. The answer is S28. Uh, I also brought into the dark room a uh, small bottle of LB and PBS. So if I put these under the lights, you can see for LB there is uh, a weak but detectable fluorescent signal. So this is something that we don't want to include in our readings. We want to measure fluorescence only from bacteria, which is the reason why we washed the LB away and replaced it with this PBS, which has absolutely no detectable fluorescent signal at all. So the final thing that I'll load on here are our two one mil aliquots of cells that we prepared, S27 and S28. And you can clearly see a very strong fluorescent signal that is specific to the S28 strain. So this is the same fluorescent signal that the plate reader uh, is going to read, although in a quantitative way. And when we take this fluorescent signal and divide it by the absorbance, or the OD, of the strain uh, that we loaded onto the plate reader, we'll get a quantitative measurement of the fluorescence per cell. Thank <laughs> you.